All right. All right. How's everybody doing out there? How's everybody doing? Welcome to another edition. Well, we haven't been going live for a little while. We've been doing a lot of things behind the scenes, but uh, just making things better. We are now uh, going into a new, a new phase, a, a new way of doing things. We're actually doing a lot more interviews. We're bringing in experts. And hey, by the way, my name is Brian, aka Uncle B. And for the last Ooh, 23 years. I've been a men's performance coach with African Fly, now known as Good Wood. And this is what we do. We uh, we talk about sexual health. We talk about things to make you better as a man all around. But specifically, when we're talking about the bedroom, how to take care of your health, we're talking about the food. We're talking about your exercise, your sleep, all of that, everything that is needed. Uh, let me go ahead and give a shout out to Tony in Connecticut. Hey, what's going on there? Um, what's going on, Damon? Hey, <laughs> I haven't seen you in a while. What's going on, Will? Will Person, um, Eugene, everybody. Hey, welcome. Glad to have you on board. If you're just hopping on, go ahead and leave your name and uh, where you're from in the chat. If you have any questions, please uh, let me know. Uh, we're going to be talking today. Earlier today, we put out a video. This is what we do every Thursday uh, at 1 p.m. We put out a video talking about a specific um, issue that guys may have. Today, we talked about the erection wall. Uh, what happens when you're going through life, you hit a certain stage of life, and you you know your erections are not what they used to be, and then you may hit a point, we're trying to help you avoid this, hit a point where you don't have erections anymore. And you know we went through that. Please check out the library. If you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe uh, to the channel um, so you can get more of this information. And today we're doing something extra special. We're starting off with a person I did a podcast with. Uh, it was a great podcast. She's a, a great uh, media personality in, her, in and of her own right. We're talking about Miss Alana Pratt is in the house. Um, she has been, um, she's been doing her thing for a while. She deals with, she's an intimacy coach. Um, I'm a sexual performance coach. She's an intimacy coach. And so, you know, we, we deal in the same, uh, the same realm, if you will. And, you know, part of what I wanted to make sure we have happen is that, you know, we get a chance to talk to as many guys as possible to, and, you know, we talk to guys all the time, but we don't talk about necessarily all the, the intimacy things that uh, is necessary for you to have the best, to become the best version of yourself. And we were talking about uh, <laughs> Alana, you know, she's an intimacy expert. She's also an author. She's a host. She's a speaker. Um, she's a global media personality, and we're talking about being on uh, such programs as Huffington Post, uh, Pe uh, People Magazine, Forbes, CBS, ABC, Fox, and more. This is what she does. I mean, you know, when you're Ivy League educated, uh, Ivy League grad, you get to do things like that. Uh, she's written six books, has interviewed Whoopi Goldberg uh, um, and, and other folks. Um, she hosts a podcast that I was on, uh, Intimate Conversations, and we had a great discussion on there. Um, she's done a lot of things and that's what's, you know, makes her special. That's the reason why she does what she does. And I had to, uh, I had to have her on, um, you know, she has a partnering app and we're going to be talking about that later, uh, that she's coming out with basically. So, you know, uh, the people who join, who join in with this app, they're not only going to find someone, but they get the information to become the one to find the one. So you can keep that one. So, you know, um, that's, that's, uh, her heartmates. Uh, for couples, she she has private and coaching services. It's just a wonderful thing, you know. Just to have her on is is a blessing. And let me go ahead and bring her into the into the room, um, guys. Welcome, uh, Miss Alana Pratt. Hi, how you doing? I'm ready for the holidays, Uncle B. Thanks for having <laughs> me. <laughs> I am glad, so glad to have you on. This is uh, really wonderful. I mean, you know, you got the festive things going on there. I, I love that. I love that. Um, what we're going to talk about, you know, it, uh, from my side is really, the, you know, we talk about the physical side, but we need to talk about, you know, obviously, if you're in a relationship, you want to get that intimacy going. And yeah. that's why we have you here. If you can just give us a little bit more. I've talked about the upfront stuff, but, you know, yeah. I, I've talked to you before and we've had that that conversation. What more can you tell us about yourself and what you do? 
Oh, thank you. Yeah, all the credibility stuff you you heard already from Brian. I think the vulnerability stuff that I want you to know is that I I came became an intimacy expert because I was oh I forget can I swear on YouTube and not can't swear yeah you're, you're fine doesn't matter <laughs> so I was um as my relationships were fucked up and mm-hmm. so what I realized after divorce number one and divorce number two and a twelve year custody battle that mm. the only thing common was this one right here, Mm, me. mm -hmm. What I realized is I did not have an intimate relationship with myself. I was highly critical of myself. I was spinning in my very smart head and I didn't know how to resolve my shame. Um, And I felt very deeply insecure, but I didn't want anyone to know about it. And as I began to do my own inner work and get trained in these high level quantum psychology, somatic experiential processes, my life really started to turn around. And Mm. now I'm trained in it. I have my coaches trained in it and I help clients really heal their heartbreak, not from just a better mindset. Mindset is good, but this is really about heart set. Science tells us that only five or 8% is what we're consciously aware of. Mm. More than 90% of what's going on is unconscious and unhealed traumas and wounds. And so very intelligent people are making the same mistakes over and over And they're shaming themselves when all along it's this blind spot within that I can help them with. And I'm so grateful to be here today to talk about it. That's great. That's great. Yeah, when we talked before, we had conversations. You know, you were interviewing me. So I was talking all about, you know, the things that fellas go through. Um, And I thought it was really interesting because there are blind spots uh, for both of us. You talk about blind spots. Um, The blind spot for uh, a lot of uh, for a lot of guys when it comes to, you know, the intimacy is just really understanding ourselves and being able to explain it, you know, to the person that we're with in terms of like, hey, um, you know, it's not working tonight because and you're not sure why. And, you know, that's the part where I come in and it's like, hey, what did you eat last night? What did you drinking? What is your pattern? Why are you ending up in this situation? Yeah. But, you know, from the woman's side, let's, let's, let's just run a quick scenario. Um, yeah. You know, we're, we're uh, it's that time. Uh, we, we want to get intimate. We're about to, you know, start some things. And as a guy, you know, uh, I had that drink the other night and uh, I had some cake earlier in the day. I didn't even think about it. And we're trying to be intimate and uh, I'm not functioning correctly uh, on a scale of one to 10 in terms of you know, your erection performance. You, you know, I would love to be a 10, but tonight I'm a five. It's going to take a whole lot of work, a whole lot of time. And then I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen. Tell us, what do you think, uh, for, for, from a woman's point of view, what do most women think happens? Uh, what are the, what's going through their mind? Mm. All of this depends on the man and the woman's level of consciousness. So when mm. I say consciousness, it means is your heart open? So the best of your brain is on fire and your intuition is present? Or is your heart closed and you're in fear in the part of your brain that's fight or flight or freeze or fawn and you can't hear your intuition? So you don't know what you know and you feel terrified to be in your skin. So if somebody is unconscious and their heart is closed, the woman would maybe blame him, blame herself, because she wouldn't know how to open her heart and feel her feelings. And same with the gentleman. If he's just going to live in in his head and go, what's wrong with me? Or feel ashamed or embarrassed. Again, his heart will close. And then the energy, it's science, people. The energy won't be able to go all the way up and down the body. And and the penis has been shamed by her or him. And the penis is like, oh, no, I feel bad. I go (laughs) away. Right? And so it's really about being brave, opening our heart to truth, feeling feelings, being able to express those bravely and vulnerably um, to yourself, to your penis, have a conversation, um, be on the same team, not opposing teams, and be able to Mm. share that vulnerably with a conscious woman. And when you share that way with her, you're on the same team with her too. She's not going to judge you or blame you. And she has room to say her feelings too. And you're in this together on a journey to bring back healthy intimacy in your life even stronger intimacy than before the quote unquote problem happened mm-hmm. because we're not yes. going to see it as a problem. We're going to see it as an opportunity. And, uh, one of the things you said sort of, uh, I, I want a lot of guys to understand is that, you know, it's an exchange of energy and, you know, from a, not only a, a physical standpoint, a chemical standpoint, uh, a spiritual standpoint, yes. you know, and if you're not in sync with each other, it, then it's going to be a problem. And so, you know, a lot of it has to do obviously with communications and, you know, for a lot of guys, it's, uh, it's, it's very difficult. This, uh, you know, I'm going to be upfront, you know, as, as with 
the vast majority of men, um, you're going to run into a time when you're thinking everything is supposed to work and it's not. And then it's like, you know, uh, there's that thing that goes through your mind. I mean, the first time it happens, you're like, oh, I don't have no idea what's going on. The second time you have, oh, oh, whoa, whoa, what's going on? And yeah. then it, it can get progressively worse. So what you really want to do is, you know, be able to communicate. It's like, hey, this is a physical thing. But, you know, what happens after that is, I think, is the most important part for uh, mm -hmm. both parties to understand. So, yeah. you know, what would you say is a great, a good way? Um, to, you know, that happens. What do you do? Uh, what, what works from a woman's side? What do you think a, a guy should, uh, should be able to communicate yeah. at that point? Remind me, I will answer this question, but I just want to back up for a second. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times it is physical and you're like the master at helping them with that. But a lot of times it's not physical. It's emotional. Mm -hmm. It's actually in their head. Um, it's the way they're talking to themselves. It's the shame that it didn't go well a month ago or a week ago. And so the reason that it's happening isn't even physical. It's totally emotional. Hmm. And so we call that shame um, or maybe self-criticism, or we've disconnected from staying in our body and being with our penis and having a conversation like saying, hey, dude, hey, penis, <laughs> like talk to your penis. I'm like, what's going on? Oh, I'm afraid she might reject me. Oh, I'm afraid she thinks I'm not good enough. Oh, I feel like a horrible man. And, and a lot of times when you start to feel your feelings and stay in your body and, and get connected to truth, you'll realize something very important has happened. Your worth and your performance has been collapsed into the same thing. Mm. Now, I want people to understand that when you get present with yourself and feel your feelings and listen to your heart and talk to your penis, you can unseparate these two. And go, yeah, okay, so the, the, erect, the erection has been up and down. My accomplishment has been up and down. My achievement has been up and down. But you know something? My worth didn't go anywhere. My worth is my worth. I am that I am. I am a good human. But when they're collapsed and it doesn't work, you think you're a bad human. And then you're ashamed of yourself. So we want to be very clear to uncollapse these within mm. yourself. And then also have this conversation with your partner. Just because we didn't have genital copulation mm -hmm. as effectively as all the porn says we should, we <laughs> are okay. We right. are connected. We are a team. We are in this together. We get to be real and we get to explore all these other ways to take it out of the accomplishment arena. We get to start back with the basics again. We get yeah. to start back with reminding men that I have um, one of my most popular videos on YouTube is penetrate her three ways. And obviously one of the ways is with your beautiful penis. But the other way, women, we want to be penetrated is with your heart. Mm. We want to feel your heart so that we can open our heart and we can surrender in safety and in rapture to you. So you want to be able to penetrate her with your heart, which means it damn well be better be open or she can't mm. feel your heart. Right. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the other way we want to be penetrated is we want to be seen. We want to mm. be seen. And so see not just her physique, but see her, her light, her essence, see her dimples, see her fears, see her and be mm -hmm. with her. So when we learn how to penetrate more than just the actual penis and the vagina, we get to experience what I call intimacy and vulnerability and transparency. And this is when it's safe to communicate when you're scared and you don't have to go around trying to fix the problem. Because what if there's not a problem? What if this is just another step on the journey and the adventure and the mystery of life? And you take all the pressure pressure off performance and having to be perfect. And instead you deepen in your vulnerability and your heart connection, which I swear conscious women ache for this. Because mm. no, I'm sorry, we have vibrators. We can take care of ourselves. But we so we we enjoy sex, that's for sure. But it's way more than just genital copulation we're looking for. We're looking to be claimed and mm. held in in all of our feelings. And sometimes it's the opposite. Sometimes it's about him putting his breast against or his head against her breast and just letting him be held for a change. Yeah. It doesn't always have to be one way. We want to create safety for both people. Yeah. And I think that's really important to for guys to understand. Um, and and quick shout out to Ty from Kansas City, Missouri. He said, uh, stress is the reason why my intimacy is, is stagnant. There you um, go. Emotional. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Ty, for that truth. Please keep going, Brian.
Yeah. So it, it's really important for, you know, us as guys to just pay attention to not only it's not just a physical thing. I mean, that's that's what we do. We have a physical member. So we we sure. really think in that that vein. So, uh, you know, it, it's especially with when it's uh, with a person that you care about, that cares about you, yeah. uh, you know, it, that and that's really where you get to uh, an opportunity to to relax. I mean, this is a learning situation because it's for both of you. Um, it's a learning situation not only from the physical side, but it's also from that emotional side. So yes. that you can, you know, that's that as you said that moment where you're able to uh, bring yourself a little bit closer together than ever before. Because now you're talking about what you know romance relationship is is really all about. It's, not every time everything's going to be perfect. You have yeah. to, as you say, uh, you, you have your penis, but you know where's the other penetrations going? Are you are you open to uh, uh, really feeling this other person and you know um, having that caring part of it? I think that's really important. Yeah, yeah. One thing that's not possible is to connect with another when your heart is closed and you're in shame. So it really starts with all men um, and women. We have our issues too. So whatever our issues are as women, but it's, it's about coming home and saying, you know what, you write down, like, I feel like a loser. I'm a horrible lover. Maybe she'll leave me like all the scary things, write them all down. And then at the beginning of the sentence, say, even though I'm scared, she'll reject me. At the end of the sentence, you put, I love and accept myself. Now that doesn't mean we don't prefer a different situation, but it mm. means we're going to stop resisting the moment and stop resisting ourselves and stop res wasting this energy in, in resistance and take it back and say, even though I feel like a schmuck, I love and accept myself, whatever mm -hmm. it is, it's about coming home to yourself first. That dissolves the shame and you start to become present again. Then yeah. your heart opens and you become brave and courageous to speak up. And so you might say, hey, I'm sorry, um, it's not working tonight. But then the next part would be, be real, be vulnerable. And I'm scared you don't love me mm. or I'm scared you'll leave me or I feel like a loser. Okay. And then another key to communicating in a healthy way is when somebody shares something like that, don't go fix them. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. Cause it's not fine. Mm, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just say, thank you. Hmm. Receive their communication without fixing it, without changing them. They're not broken. They're just human. Right. And so if she could say, he says what he says, she's thank you. He's like, oh, I didn't get emasculated. I didn't get rejected. I'm okay. We can keep going. Then I would encourage her to say, tell me more. Mm -hmm. and just listen, just shut the fuck up and listen. And it can go <laughs> either direction. And it's about hearing each other, not for the sake of an outcome, for a solution. So nobody has to feel uncomfortable anymore. Mm -hmm. you know, sitting in the fire of discomfort and saying, tell me more, go deeper. Tell me yeah. more, go deeper. Tell me more, go deeper. That's intimacy. That's when you're that real. And you're like, oh my God, my greatest fear of being rejected. I didn't get rejected. She loves me more than a perfect penis every single day. Wow. <laughs> we actually have something here. And then over time, you, you become another safe place for her to be real. Maybe one night she has horrible cramps or she's not as juicy as she wants. And she doesn't want you to think she's not turned on, but she's going through menopause and it's not, she's not mm. orgasm or she's in her head, not mm -hmm. in her body. And she can't get off. Like it's going to happen to everybody. Now you've created a safe space for, for her to say, I'm sorry, I just, I just can't seem to get off tonight. It's not you. And he's like, thank you. Tell yeah. me more. She's like, I just don't want you to leave me for somebody else. Thank you. I hear you. I'm not going anywhere. What else? Well, is it okay if we just spoon? Am I good enough if we just spoon? Of course. Come here, baby. Right? And then, and then sometimes it just, everything, all the systems work. Once the emotions have calmed down, the hearts have opened. Scientifically, the energy is not now clenched like a hose in your heart. Your heart is open. The energy is going flowing through the body. This is like very tantric, energetic. This is science. And all of a sudden, look at that. The plumbing's working. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, once again, for those who are just joining us, we are on live with Alana Pratt. Um, she is an intimacy expert author and obviously a speaker um so uh really loving this conversation we want to give a shout out to uno Ro. i just started a new relationship and i'm so lucky my girlfriend is so understanding it mm -hmm. certainly helps when your partner is supportive that is very true and you know you have to give that space for support um i've talked to guys who you know they have this situation happen and it can you know 
uh, they were uh, a participant in it going off the rails in terms of like, you know, saying, that, oh, well, it's, it's you, it's something about you, it's not, I'm not turned on and things like that. And it's like, well, you're not helping that situation. Uh, you're actually making that, making that situation worse. So a lot of what you just said uh, makes a whole lot of sense. Um, mm -hmm. There are, you know, when it comes to that level of stress, you know, just one thing I want to make sure from a, um, a stress, one of the things that guys can do, um, mm -hmm. it's called spectatoring. Spectatoring is when, you know, that time that it did, didn't work out, you know, your erection wasn't there and the second time it wasn't there and the third time it wasn't there. And now you're thinking like you never thought before. You're thinking like, okay, she's, she's home now. So I should have an erection. You know, she's coming to bed. I should have an erection. She's naked. I should have an erection. And what you're actually doing is creating more stress. You're creating more cortisol mm -hmm. to the point that, you know, you're just sitting there looking at your, your Johnson, just waiting for it to, to go. And that cortisol is stressing out your, your Johnson. You're not you're not going to be able uh, to perform. So that's a, a lot of guys who hear that, you know, they start doing that. It's like, stop thinking about it. Just relax. Yeah. That's really important um, because that relaxation is, is the most important part. And it's key that you have that space that, that you're talking about to have that mm -hmm. conversation. Mm -hmm. You make such a great point of getting inside of guys head to help, to help un us all understand what, how we go off the rails is we leave the present moment and mm -hmm. we go into past and then we're afraid of a future slowing down even though maybe what we all watched in movies or what have you is like you know fast bam bam thank you ma'am we women take a good 18 minutes to get aroused okay we don't mind if you slow down and if you slow down and be present with your breath be present with how beautiful this woman is be present with gratitude for the moment that you get to explore intimacy with someone and you just start being grateful and you compliment her and you feel into how much you appreciate her or love her um, or are turned on by her or he, just, honey, just, just go even slower. God, I just love the way your neck is right there with your clavicle. God, you're beautiful. She will start to be turned on. She will start to feel safe and seen. She will start to feel beautiful. And this, we could call it foreplay, but it's not like a script to read. It's really a practice of embodiment to stay out of the head, which is where all the stress and the thoughts all created, in the heart, feeling, feel your feelings. And even mm. if the feelings could be nervousness as she's approaching you and you try to pretend you're all cool, but you're not really feeling very cool, you can slow down and say, hey, babe, could we just kiss for five minutes? The slowest we've ever kissed. And, mm. and allow yourself to get present, whatever you need or even be more vulnerable and just say, I'm jumping into my head. I really want to be present. Let's go back to one of our favorite memories of when we danced together or when we first met, like help yourself get into your heart, get into your body, get into your feelings and slow down and, and be real. That is, I swear, the sexiest thing a man can be is present. Present mm. doesn't mean um, James Bond. I'm the, no, no, no. I didn't say perfect. I said present. <laughs> present is being real with what's so and slowing down and that will really help the energy flow yes. and, and uh, i have something else i want to say too but i want to hear what you want to say about the slowdown mm -hmm. oh yeah absolutely um what i say all the time is foreplay is for men um and that's because especially if you're having sexual health issues you mm -hmm. know as we go through the day you know if we think about it you know Years in the distance, in the distant past, we were in situations where we were seeing, uh, you know, we were out in nature, you know, things were working better and you're seeing women all the time with typically less clothing. You're seeing people, you, it, it's, it's a, we're in a very different situation. So, you mm -hmm. know, being intimate is into your mate. And it's very difficult to be present when you have so many different things going on in your head. Uh, yeah. You got this bill going on. You got that bill going on. Even like uh, Damon Wallace in the comment section said, honestly, stress, fear and, and closed heart are the reason why intimacy is definitely stagnant. Having mm -hmm. emotional connection with your sexual partner is very important to give her pleasure and energy. Yeah. Love, love it, man. I love it too, Damon. Yes. And so first we can't connect with another if we're not first connected to ourself. Mm. And we often leave ourselves to please the other so that they don't reject us. Right. But we've left our body. We've left ourself. And so what we want to do is have that emotional connection first with yourself. Soothe little you. 
There's a little you inside of everyone's heart who's nervous about being rejected or anxious or avoidant or whatever he is. We first soothe ourselves. Hey, remember that sentence? Even though we have no idea how this is going to go, I love and accept you, right? So no matter what comes up, we meet ourselves, we honor our feelings, and we affirm that I got your own back. Maybe she'll reject us, but I'll never reject you, right? It's this intimate relationship with yourself that's first and solid. And then you have the capacity to open your heart to your partner and slow down and enjoy mm -hmm. intimacy, not go straight for the goal. Let go of the goal. I swear, I can, I can have an orgasm uh, easier, no offense, but without genital copulation. A lot of women, that's a harder way for her to have pleasure, right? Mm. There's so many ways that she will be so fulfilled as she notices you put a glass of wine down beside beside you as you're working on the laptop. Oh, look at that. He's put some music on. Oh, I think I even smell a little incense. Oh, he's such a lovely, right? Like that's getting me safe, feeling mm -hmm. seen, feeling cared for. And then let's just sit down and talk about our day and rub each other's feet, be present, listen. It doesn't have to be all about the goal. And if you can be present every step of the way and slow down, you'd mm -hmm. be amazed how you don't actually have to figure out how to please her. You don't have to figure out how to have an erection. You don't need to figure anything out. Because here's something that also makes me a little different than other maybe sex therapists or, or what have you. I geek out with quantum physicists on my show, but I'm also very, very spiritual. And what I've learned from the physicists is that the universe liter literally lives within us. Mm. And what I've learned from all the spiritual teachers is that God or the divine or the universe is literally in, as, and through us. It's not all us in our ego mind trying to control the outcome. That's just our mind and ego. Who we truly are is a vessel through which the energy of the divine, God comes through your hands. God comes through your penis. God comes through your eyes. Like, look at your partner as if you were looking through the eyes of the divine at your partner and watch all of those mind chatters go away. And you're just in rapture with this goddess who's in front of you, who you get to connect with. And then as you touch her, you could think, well, I should touch her this way, right? But that's the <laughs> mind trying to do it right. Focus mm -hmm. on an outcome and in fear of rejection. But if you let go of the mind and you just say, universe, help me touch her in a way where she will just open like a flower. Use my hands, divine, and help me open her and blossom her. And, and then you're aware, you're present, and you notice she's scrunching her face. So you slow down a bit and her face relaxes because you're interacting with her. Mm. Or this, this her, her shoulder just went down. Oh, that way of holding the small of her back seems to make her safe. Oh, and it becomes this mystery without a goal. Let go of the goal. The goal is pleasure and you're already having it. So you already succeeded, okay? <laughs> have, just take your time and, and what if she's like a present to unwrap? She'll feel that level of uh, presence and care. You'll feel more powerful because you've let go of trying to do it right and be perfect, let go mm -hmm. of all that. And you're just enjoying your body in your heart, and then you're surrendering the whole damn thing to the universe, God, the divine, using you as the two of you make love. Yeah, and I think it's it's important to uh, for us to remind ourselves the reason why we're doing this. Um, just in terms of, of you know, we we think about it. You know, when you're in high school and you know in college, and you're like, oh man, I can't wait till I have somebody I can you know uh, uh, really connect with. I mean, you know, you not just just that one time is like, oh, that chick, this, this, you finally got somebody that you're really with that, mm -hmm. you know, you, you were thinking like, oh, when you're in high school, especially we had all that energy, it's like, ah, I can have, I can have sex all the time. We can, you know, we can just be with each other. And, you know, as you get older, it's like, what well, it takes it up to another level in terms yeah. of like, you know, you're really with this person now. It's like, you know, going beyond sex, going beyond just, just thinking about the end goal, how is it helping out with the rest of your life? How are you feeling? That level, the things you're talking about, um, you know, in terms of the strategies, you know, uh, um, taking the things that are negative and, and sort of, you know, even though uh, it's like taking it to the next level, that's giving you confidence. So if yeah. you're now confident, not only in your physical self, but also in the intimacy that you have with this person, mm -hmm it becomes a lot easier. It's, it's no longer like, as you said, just focusing on the end goal is now focusing on, on how you can, you know, really enjoy each other on a much deeper level. 
Mm, you're so you're spot on, Brian. As I'm 52, so as we get older, none of our parts work like they used to work. None of us mm. can swing from the chandeliers like we used to be able to. And so, and and that's fun. It's fun to do that in our 20s or, or 30s, what have you. What becomes important, what really, really matters is feeling safe, seen, and understood. And knowing that somebody has your back and they're not going to reject you when you're human. And to know that you can both be there for each other in your moments of fear or anger or, or sadness or shame and just stay connected. That is not possible if we can't stay connected to ourselves. We cannot give the gift of presence if we're not present with ourselves. We can't give the gift of allowance and listening and curiosity if we criticize and avoid ourselves all the time. So it really becomes, sex becomes a, a spiritual practice of an invitation to stay connected to yourself, connected to your partner, let go of the outcome, let go of any significance or importance, and just be your brave, heart-open self. And when you do that, you can also invite other ways. Maybe you've always wanted to try something a little kinky or reading erotic material or, or things that you mm -hmm. in the past were worried about. So it's not just the safe place to talk about ED, which I would really like us not to talk about dysfunction anymore. Can we just have another word? Mm -hmm. Like it's like right. erectile guidance, erectile information. It's just <laughs> telling you something. It's You're not wrong, nor is your penis wrong, okay? Nobody's wrong here. And so as we have a different point of view, there's safety to talk about fears or shames, but there's also safety to talk about wild, kinky, erotic places where you've, you've built such a connection of safety that you can let go of control and you can let the universe have its way with both of you together. And it's not one plus one equals two. It's one plus one equals infinity. And it's mm. nourishing, not just for your body and your hormones and all the rest of it. It's literally nourishing for your soul your mission, vision, and purpose on the planet. You become more present with the kids, with their issues. You become mm. more present when the bank account doesn't look like you want the bank account to look like. You become more present when someone says, my my, my parent just died. You're like, oh, I'm so sorry. You, you have that very same skill. You said, oh, I'm sorry, tell me more. You can stay there with people who need you. And to me, that is a, a man whose grandeur has been awakened, that he can do that for himself, his lover, and his world, his community, his family. Wow, that is great. For those who are just joining us, we are here with Alana Pry, intimacy expert, author, host, and speaker. Um, and just wanted to, you know, I wanted to make sure we talk about this, your intimacy breakthrough experience. If you could dive into that and let us know, what does that mean? What, what, what does oh. that mean? Yeah, thank you. Um, I have a link here for all of you, a special one from, from Brian, so you get a good deal. Um, what I've discovered is that people are generally pretty smart. They listen to this podcast, they read books, they, 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 they cognitively try to analyze everything. And if they, that's enough to fix it, they'll fix it. But if there's still a pattern that's still reoccurring and you've tried everything, what it is, is it's something beneath the chin. It's a blind spot. It's an emotional band-aid that's going on. It's a trauma, a wound, a shaming of your sexuality. It's something deeper. And in my intimacy breakthrough experiences, it's like I look under the hood. I'm, I can't see my blind spot, <laughs> but I can see yours. And I'm able to get in there and go, yeah, you think this is the reason, but actually this is the core reason. And it's normally very deep. And it normally affects every area of your life because how you do anything is how you do everything. And so mm -hmm. while we will shine a light on what this blind spot is, and give you a path to resolve it emotionally, mentally, spiritually, romantically, relationally. Brian's got all the physical stuff, so you don't need me for that. Mm -hmm. um, but when we get to that, you're like, oh, and you can stop shaming and blaming yourself or your partner and resolve it. And what generally happens is you and your penis literally come into right relationship again. You are not disassociating, spinning in your head. You can stay present in your body, which allows for greater sex, greater connection, greater intimacy. But because how you do anything is how you do everything, you're going to find that you start to have better uh, positive thoughts. You're able to um, regulate your emotions more easily. You find you have a deeper connection to the divine. You All of a sudden, the kids are calling you more and talking about things that really matter. You're deepening some of your friendships or letting go of the ones that have been very surface. And you really feel like a, I call it a noble badass. Um, and so I will 
when when you'd like me to, I have a special link and a special code for those of you from Brian, because I know if you if you follow him and you're committed to having great sex, but also having great health, let's be sure we also have great emotional health and spiritual health. And that is really what conscious women desire is a man oh, yeah. who can be present in the face of anything and not go anywhere and keep his heart open. Not a perfect man, a present man. Mm, that's that's great to hear. We don't have to be perfect. Oh, wow. That's perfect. Oh, no. Well, we're <laughs> shit not present perfect. So, <laughs> yeah. And I, I think it's really uh, a lot of what you're saying is really important because I tell guys not to have what I call high school sex. Uh, it's like you're doing the exact same, the things you learned in high school, you're just doing the exact same thing year after year after year, you know, the same position. You know, you can get with a woman and you get into a rut of like, okay, we're going to start with this position. We're going to go to this position. We're going to end up in this position. And okay, well, from a physical standpoint that's boring um yeah. from a emotional standpoint it's also boring and so when you go into a deeper level um as you're talking about in terms of uh the level of intimacy um and opening yourself up i mean mm-hmm. that takes it to that whole other level and i like what you said about how it affects everything else because i do know uh just talking to a lot of guys that it does affect you in terms of you know uh the rest of your life so if you're if you're if you're dealing with ED, if you're dealing with weak erections, it, it, it sits in the back of your head, no matter what you're doing. You know, it sits in the back of your head in terms of, uh, okay, I'm, I'm at work, but when I get home, uh, what am I going to do? It's, it, it, you start feeling off. You start not feeling the same. So it is important to not only, you know, take care of yourself physically, but to grow in your relationship. So now you, instead of you thinking like, Oh, this is bad. I'm I'm not feeling good. You're now starting to feel better about your relationship. That makes you feel better about work, dealing with the kids and everything else. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I'd like you to um, really have a look at your relationship with your cock, your beautiful penis. Um, Hmm. Do you talk? Are you nice to your penis when you talk? Do you blame your penis? Do you, do you feel like you guys are on the same team? that you love each other, that you're one together. I know that might sound really strange, but if you're shaming your body part, your body is going to say, I don't want to work for you. I don't want to be your friend. You're not very nice to me. So a lot of this has to do with your heart, coming home to your heart and, and forgiving yourself and honoring yourself and remembering this is about the journey. In fact, one of the companies that I own is called celebrate the process, not celebrate the goal for this very reason. So that I celebrate Mm -hmm. all my wins along the way. You might need to write an apology letter to your cock for all the ways you've treated it so horribly, (laughs) or maybe it's little you, maybe there's a young little you inside who you're blaming and hitting over the head with a two by four all the time. And you want to write an apology letter to your heart, to little you, it really, I swear comes down to alignment within And it all comes out physically alignment with your body. But if you're pushing yourself away, you're also pushing away your relationship with your penis and it's not going to cooperate. Why should it? And Mm. I say the very same thing to, to women. I say very much the same thing where people have like they um, gained a lot of weight. I'm like, what are you really hungry for? What are you really hungry for? Or what is this barrier you're putting up? So you have an excuse of not being vulnerable and brave. Everything has an emotional or spiritual connection if we slow down and feel. And when we do this work, I'll be honest, the initial part takes bravery and courage to slow down and feel. But then on the other side of it, it's not just like a better mindset. I got to say my 10 more affirmations every day, all day long, or I can't be positive. Oh my God, that's so exhausting. It doesn't even work. Mm -hmm. It's not sustainable. But when you integrate pain, shame, sadness, fear, when you literally integrate, it's like alchemy, like the alchemist, right? Alchemy. You take that lead and you turn it into gold. You turn it into true confidence in the face of anything. You turn it into true empathy and the ability to listen to others because you can listen to yourself. And you turn it into this ability to be bigger than your circumstances and, and thrive and live your dreams. And you start to take risks where you didn't before. And you start to be that leader that is quite inspiring to a lot of people, mostly to your beloved who starts to look at you as she's watched your transformation to do this in her work. And she's like, you're my hero. I couldn't have, I couldn't have done this without you. You make, you bring out the best in me. And that kind of relationship to me is nourishing for the soul. 
Yes, absolutely. Um, I do want to give a quick shout out to Dope Law. Good to see you again, sir. Uh, Keston Stewart from Trinidad and Tobago. Welcome. Welcome, sir. Um, once again, we have Alana Pratt here, intimacy expert and speaker. And this is a, a wonderful conversation just from the standpoint of, you know, I, I'm learning a lot. You know, a lot of times, you know, I think about the progression that's necessary for your level of health, but it gets to a point where it's like, even if you are at your healthiest state, you are, you're slanging it. Everything's working. It's great. Are you actually improving your relationship? Are you yeah. actually uh, getting to a point where it's like, you know, we're, we're we're in a society that you know the divorce rate is high. Everything is is so over the top, and we're not able to, as you say, slow down. Um, we're all in a rush to like, okay, well, you know, you you like I said before, you lose out in that thought process of like this is supposed to be special. Uh, whether you're married, you're, you know, in a relationship with your, your favorite girl, all of this wonderful stuff, mm -hmm. and you're now stuck in this mindset of like I just need to perform instead of thinking like, you know, it's part of the relationship that that's that's necessary, that you yeah. go the extra step that you, like you say, you put the work in. If you're not putting the work in, then what is going to end up happening? You know, you end up in a situation where even if you have, you know, the sexual side is, is working fine. Is it is it long lasting? Is it something that's special? That's the whole point of being intimate is supposed to be special. Mm, you make a great point again. I love talking with you, Brian. That's so fun. Um, <laughs> they often say, body, mind, spirit, right? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, so your sexual functions are going great. What about your mindset? What about your ability to think positively? And what about your spirit and your feelings and your heart? We want the whole package. Quite often men come to me and they're concerned, disappointed that she's just after sex or she's just after my money. And I say, okay, tell me about your relationship with your worth. Was it collapsed with your money? Or do you have money? Yes, but your worth is your worth. Or is your worth connected only to your body and your sexual performance? Well, that's why she's only interested in sex or your money, because that's all you're interested in. That's all you've deepened your relationship with. So again, it always comes back to self, be it a, a woman or a man, that we want to look at whatever our complaints are about them is an outer reflection of our own lack of intimacy with ourself, with our worth. Really, mm. what, what the men want to know is that she appreciates me for me. And I say, well, do you? Mm. And he's like, mm. oh, yeah. So really, this next level of, of earth-shattering, incredible lovemaking, it has a physical component. But it's so much more an energetic, spiritual, letting go of the edges, letting go of the outcome, just letting go to the mystery. That's where the, the wild freedom and, and rapture occurs. It's not just in doing the right physical moves, that, although that's important. And in order to have that level of, of surrender and rapture, you've got to be willing to learn how to let go of control, stay present, and surrender to the moment. And that's about your relationship with your heart. It doesn't happen when your heart is closed and wounded. It only happens when you've integrated these wounds. And just so you know, everybody's heart is wounded. Nobody, mm -hmm. I've never met one human who said, oh, I've never been betrayed. Never. Every oh, yeah. human I've ever met has been hurt, betrayed, used, cheated on, spoken to cruelly, emasculated, everybody. But here comes the choice point. Are we going to be victims of our circumstances and close our hearts and blame and play it safe and, and, and really um, disassociate from ourselves, Or are we going to open our heart and bravery, go in there and have a better relationship with our heart, our spirit, our penis, our vagina, whatever, Go in there and and learn how to sit in the fire and grow into a stronger human, a stronger soul, and that equals better lovemaking when it's body, mind, and spirit. Wow, I love it. We have Alana Pratt here. She is oh man, she's killing it with it. She's giving us that information that's very necessary. Um, I, I I wanted to just talk really quick about, you know, you talk about how to discover how a healthy, intimate relationship with yourself is key to cure the nice guy. What do you, what do you mean by nice guy? Mm. So nice guys worth are based in approval from others, not getting rejected mm. from others. They're nice as opposed to real because they're not okay unless you're okay. And so they give all their power away to her approval or disapproval. 
and they might try to lead with their money or they try to lead with being the yes guy all the time. But basically, if they really slow down and felt inside, they wouldn't like what they felt. They would feel either afraid of being rejected, ashamed of who they are, and not clear that who they are is perfectly imperfect and amazing and awesome, right? They doubt their worth. And so they become the nice guy so they can get attention. But that means they can also, a woman can use you and manipulate you because you're not going to stand in your truth. You're going to cave so that she won't reject you. Mm. So that's what, that's what I find the nice guy syndrome is. And again, it has everything to do with what we're talking about. When you can forgive yourself for that and start coming home and saying, hey, even though we're not perfect, we're pretty cool. And I like you. And even if she doesn't, I'm not going to reject you. When we build this inner relationship and we heal these unhealed traumas and triggers that when we get afraid of being rejected, we don't shut down, check out. We mm. open up and lean in. Okay. Wow. That's, That's a game changer in life. Yeah. yeah. That's powerful right there. I, ooh, this is a great conversation. Um, do want to give uh, uh, another quick shout out to, to Dope Law. He's uh just asking about uh, Goodwood and African Fly, if we have an affiliate program for that. And yes, uh, the affiliate program is coming out. We'll make sure to get the information out. Um, Alana, you have six books, uh, <laughs> so you're prolific with it. Uh, can you give us a, a, an idea what what your books are about, and you know, just 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 give us an overview of what what yeah. goes on with that? Yeah, one is called uh, How to Be a Noble Badass, and it has a lot to do with this um, dissolving of the nice guy, awakening your masculine grandeur, and really having the, having the ability to claim the woman of your dreams, right? So that's one of my books for gentlemen. And another book for gentlemen is called Scoring a Relationship, like the real inner game. And it's not an inner game of manipulation. It's an inner game of knowing your worth, opening your heart, and almost being like a vortex, really claiming, claiming her and alluring her in to your awesomeness. But it also has 10 or maybe 12 gifts that turn um, like just a normal gift into an experience. So we've been saying a lot that this is more about than just genital copulation. We're really looking at these the connection of your heart to heart for deep intimacy. Same with this book, Scoring a Relationship. For example, um, instead of just giving her 12 roses, which is lo lovely, what if you gave her one rose at a time and you gave her a reason why you think she's beautiful, why she makes a difference in your life, why you mm. appreciate her so that as she receives these flowers, it's not just a gift. She's experiencing your care for her, that she matters. And every time she looks at those 12 flowers, she's like, where's my man? I want to jump his bones. I love this man. Right. Because it means more than just the initial the initial gift. It's more about touching her soul. And so it's 10 examples of how to turn gifts into experiences, because that's really what feeds a, a long term relationship to keep it fresh and to make it go deeper over time. Oh, wow. I love that. I love that. Um, just a, a quick story for Valentine's Day when I was in college and I was broke. I actually took, went to 7-Eleven, got the roses um, and just went to every place I knew she was going to be. And I left a rose at each spot all throughout the day. Oh, yeah. She loved that. Yeah. One. Loved that one. So, you we know. We the next book together, Brian. You totally get it. Yeah. You totally get it. Oh, oh yeah. And I got it later on. So it was all good. So. See? There we go. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> absolutely absolutely i love it um so yeah let's um i wanted to go back again to you know your um uh the intimacy uh, uh program that you have if you can uh just once again tell us a little bit more about it and uh i want to make sure we get the link out to the guys yeah. so they can reach out so to on you. on my end technically i don't know how to put something in the comments but i can put it in the private chat does that give it to you so we, you can give it to the guys uh i believe so well yes okay. yes so I put in the chat, so it's a, a link to my site um, and then forward slash Goodwood. So I know you're coming from Brian. And then there's a coupon code Goodwood um, so that an intimacy breakthrough call with me is discounted to only $97. And so this intimacy experience, breakthrough experience, you're going to walk away with uh, at least three things. Absolute clarity on what you are doing that is responsible for the lack of intimacy, repelling love, or not being able to have an erection. Not as a, a judgment or shame, but as a, an awareness. Oh, that's really what's going on. So your blind spot will be revealed. Second, you will experience not being shamed. You will experience a safety and an understanding to be able to slow down and be with your own feelings in a way that you might have been avoiding and rushing and in your head and all that. 
I will create a space for you so we can actually drop in and actually get some real transformation started by feeling our feelings. And then lastly, you're going to be invited into a coaching program, be it online, be it working with me, be it groups, maybe my retreat, something where conscious people who are willing to do the work we gather and we grow together. And I'll be able to share with you what I know has worked to get men's bodies working again. I don't know if I would call myself the penis whisperer, but I could (laughs) because I've literally talked to the energy of penises when a guy Mm. can't actually hear because he's so in his head and so ashamed. I've um, been doing this for 20 years. I, not like it's a party trick, but I can hear the other side. I can hear people that have passed and I can hear bodies talk. People that mm. have had cancer, I can talk to the cancer. People that have had different issues, it's all energy. And then it turns into a physical ailment. So really be able to get in there and heal the deep wounds um, and be able to set you free sexually, but also confidently as a man. And it's I, I don't think there's a bigger gift you could give yourself and your mm. relationship than to come home and resolve these issues for the rest of your life. Because to me, at the end of the day, when they kick dirt in our face, do they say, how many cars do you have? How many millions? No, they probably say, how well did you love? How Mm. deep did you love? How open did you share? How much sexual rapture and connection did you experience? Like that to me is what we get to take with us. And so why wait till then? Let's have it now. So I invite you to book a call with me. Um, This link is good till the end of the year. So this is live now and it'll be out out on YouTube. So forgive me if the link doesn't work. If you capture me later, you can still reach out to me about that. But this um, link for the coupon code is connected to our dear friend, Brian, as your holiday gift. um, (laughs) So we can we can resolve we can resolve this. And yes, a couple of things right quick. First, shout out to uh, Regina Harris, who says thank you for uh, this very informative and healing video. Um, I love that. Thank you very much for that. Um, and yes, I did. The, the link is in the chat. Um, the link is also in the YouTube uh, description. So you want to make sure you uh, check that out. And for everyone, you know, let's go deeper. You know, we uh, I have a good 300 over 300 videos talking about the physical side. We haven't talked about this side of things. And mm-hmm. this is where you grow up. To me, <laughs> I would say that, like I said, let's get rid of the high school sex. Let's go to that deeper level. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we want to I, I do what I do because I want guys to be as healthy as possible. I think this conversation right here takes that health to another level, because when your relationship is healthy, that means you have so much less stress. <laughs> uh, you have so much. So yeah, the kids are happier. You're happier. Uh, um, your finances are actually happier. You're less stressed. So you can do better at everything. Yeah. So, yes. Uh, yes, absolutely. Oh, I love this, Brian. I really, I like that you're saying we're growing up because the older I get, even though I might not look like I looked when I was 20, when I'm with a man that's truly present and can be with his feelings, I can get orgasmic just by his gaze, just mm. by how slowly he's touching. And it's nice if he has a great penis and we have some, some great fun as well. But in the whole lovemaking experience of like an hour or so, the actual penetration period is quite small compared to how safe he makes me feel, how open my heart is, how connected we are, how nourished we are. And then we have great sex. It's a it's a nourishing experience for your soul and your life. And we we need to put attention to this time, energy and resources for it. But the, the return. There it is. There's my radiate love. This is what happens. <laughs> Oh, I saw that. I saw the radiate part. I didn't know. Yeah, radiate love. <laughs> there you go. I love it. I love it. Uh, and Dope Law uh, is saying that, the, uh, that has an amazing. You have an amazing product and a program, and the dollar amount isn't bad at all. Uh, that's always a great thing. Um, and Damon Wallace says, "Thank you for sharing this information with us, uh, and I really appreciate it. Mm. I love all of that." Um, <laughs> uh, Thank you so much for, for for stepping in, you know, taking us to that next level. Um, I appreciate it. I'm sure everybody here appreciates it. Um, this is what we do. We try to make uh, people happy, healthy, better relationships. Um, you know, I have good wood. Uh, we have good wood university where we're going to collect all of this information. So it's a repository for guys to come in and be able to get not only their, you know, we already have the sexual health side of it pretty much locked down, but we do want to yeah. take it to the next level which you have introduced us to uh Mm -hmm. guys please check out that link please check out her um she she 
this is what she does. Twenty years. I mean, you know, this this once you do you do something for twenty, you pick up on certain things that other people don't see. And you mm-hmm. know, from our conversation, I can tell already. So, uh, mm-hmm. thank you. Is there anything else that you'd like to uh, share with us? Mm-hmm. I just want to say it's never too late to heal your relationship with your sexuality and your emotions and your shame. I have taken people that have not had sex for 10 years in a relationship, a decade, and help them get back into their bodies, forgive themselves, forgive each other, and get to know each other anew. So no matter what's happened in the past, all of it can be healed. It really comes down to your commitment. Is your lovemaking and your full self-expression and and the ability to have soul-shaking connection and be unapologetic with who you are and love your body and love sex and love into, if you choose that, you can have it. So you're in the power position. And if that's something you're really committed to, getting that elephant out of the living room, being able to talk openly and connect more deeply, it would be such an honor to support you on this journey. This is why I'm on the planet. Not a very good cook, not a very good accountant. (laughs) This is is my genius. And uh, it's been an honor to be here tonight. And Brian, thank you for all that you do, all that you provide. I'm so grateful to know you, play with you this way and support our communities. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you. I really do appreciate you being on with us. Uh, once again, guys, Alana Pratt, check out her her link there. Also, uh, Dope Law, I did um, put the uh, uh, email in the chat. Um, go ahead and reach out to us. We'll make sure we get all the information you need for affiliate programs, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, my name is Brian, a.k.a. Uncle B. This is Alana Pratt. This has been Goodwood University. And uh, thank you very much for being with us. And hey, uh, we're going to have you sometime. We got to do this again. We got to go even deeper. So love it. All right. Thank you very much, everybody, for here. Thank you, Alana. We'll talk to you later. Enjoy. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. All right. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. Okay.